in to the online broadcast network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! I have but to swallow this and be, for the rest of my days, persecuted by a legend of goblins all of my own creation. Humbug, I tell you. Humbug. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to the After Buzz TV Grim After Show. I'm your host, Zach Wilson. Joining me tonight, the fantastic Yell Teagle. Hi, everybody. Dylan Chance, unfortunately, is traveling, oh. so he cannot be here tonight. Bah humbug. But yes, we say bah humbug to you, Dylan. No, I wish you were here. Humbug. Yes. Um, guys, we're, we're talking about uh, the episode, The Grim Who Stole Christmas. Yes. And it just makes me happy inside. Um, I'm going to be real honest. I love the story of The Grinch. It's one of my favorite. In fact, I would say my favorite Christmas story, especially uh, all the parts until his heart grew and he gave back Christmas. <laughs> Loved it. For those who don't know, not a fan of Christmas, this one. <laughs> not a fan. So I loved this episode that they were like, Christmas! Bah! Loved it. Absolutely That there's little it. children running around ruining Christmas intentionally. Yeah. Some of us can relate to that. It's like the reverse who's. Yeah, it was great. Um, yeah, no, the reveal, uh, not to jump way ahead, but the reveal that they were kids made me, you know, I was a little hesitant about how I felt about it. Overall, in this episode, we had a really good Vessin of, of the week. Yeah. And then that's how I themed. And some real emotional feels that I don't know how to feel about right now. Yeah, there were some feels. I don't know. I don't know what to do, yo. <laughs> feel in, the feels. We're in so much trouble. Aww. But actually, we're not. We have no more trouble. No, we're out of trouble. I have some hashtags for trouble that I want. <laughs> hashtag out of trouble. No, I have hashtag bring back trouble. Hashtag give us trouble. Ooh, I like give us trouble. And hashtag we love trouble. <laughs> we gotta pick already. one. We gotta pick one so that it can trend. If we have five tr tr uh, hashtags, nothing's gonna trend here, yo. Whatever. I want trouble. I want. I like. I want trouble. We want trouble. We, we give us trouble. There's so many trouble hashtags, and we got some really good ones I, from the fans. Okay, well, we'll we'll rely on the fans to, yeah. to pick one. Mm -hmm. Go on your Twitter feeds, people. Yeah. Tweet hashtag trouble hashtag whatever thing that involves trouble as well. Yeah, we want NBC and the writers mm -hmm. and everyone else. Yeah, Universal Studios. Mm -hmm. They all need to know that we love trouble. The city of Portland needs to know. Right to the mayor of Portland. <laughs> yes, we need trouble. <laughs> Yeah. Be careful of your spelling. That could be very misconstrued. Yeah. <laughs> well, but. <laughs> um, but so let's talk about Trouble's little storyline in okay. this. Um, because that's like the the, the, the one-off story is great. And mm -hmm. there's some really good stuff with Mon Rosalie. Yeah. And there's like some little stuff with Renard, Nick, And Christmassy Woo. stuff. Yeah. But the big series note in this episode in terms mm -hmm. of like the – story going forward yeah is trouble and josh and you were right it was your prediction you were right that trub that josh would need protection and trouble would go oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i had a couple of predictions that came true in this episode whatever <laughs> but we'll get into my other yeah my other wild swing that is was right <laughs> on the money later um you know we open up on josh with the the idea like i wish i could be like nick mm. we get some grim envy yeah. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't have Grim Envy? I have Grim Envy. Are yeah. you kidding? That sounds that looks awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sounds dangerous, and I'd be I'll be perfectly honest, I would not be putting myself in, in in harm's way as much as Nick. Well, I mean, Josh who has Grim Envy goes out and does grim things and like puts himself out there and like really is like I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to man up and, and grim up. Well, I guess that's the difference is like before all this happened, mm -hmm. he would have been like no, I'm not going to go hit, like, yeah. a guy in the head with a rock. Like, <laughs> are you crazy? I'm not going to seek out that kind of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But 
when he's confronted with it, yeah. when he's like, it's put in front of him, when he's chased out by Hundiagers, mm-hmm. I think I got it this time. Yeah. I'm so close. Um, um, when he's chased out of his house. Hundiager. Hundiager. Yeah. Hund- yeah, I did. I, I, write it, I wrote it down. It's Hundiager. Yeah. We want to say Jager because we think it's more foreign than it is, but it's not. Hundiager. Hundiager. The Hund- he's chased out by two Hundiagers. Mm-hmm. Um, it's time to step up. Yeah. Like your life is your life as you know it is not gonna ever be the same. Mm-hmm. You can't just ignore this kind of stuff and go back. It's just like Nick when he lost his powers. Yeah. There's no going back. Mm-hmm. There's no turning it off. Right. Um. There's, and there's no forgetting that your neighbor might be a human or he might be a hoslick. Yeah. Who knows? You never know what you're gonna find. Yeah. For all you know, he could be a. Uh, I don't know. I was trying to think of something crazy. A but... hoon Jaeger. <laughs> a hoon Jaeger. He could be any number of things. Oh, he could be a, a squid head. A, a brain sucky squid uh, head. A, uh, a, uh, <laughs> a, uh, I'm flipping through my notes like, where's the crazy grim stuff? Uh, he do could... too many shows. Yeah. <laughs> he could be a... Uh... No, that's the golem episode. Golem episode. <laughs> that's not helpful. Golem. Golem. Sorry. <laughs> Tangent. Anyway. Yeah. Um, he could be a chubacabra. That's we're not there yet, y'all. Okay. Save it for predictions. <laughs> Sorry. Um. Anyway, so it's like a little trouble training sesh. Yeah. That Josh goes on. She's like, "You stay here. I'm gonna go investigate." And they're investigating who put the wolf songle, mm-hmm. uh, the burning wolf songle, on Mon Rosalie's front lawn. They find their local KKK is what they find. <laughs> More or less, yeah. yeah. Um, um, oh, can we talk about the mask? Yes, the creepy little mask. Um, I did not expect it to be flimsy for whatever reason. When they, when we first saw the two guys watching Monroe's Lee Spice Shop, um, and they had the mask, I this is gonna sound weird. It looked in my mind to to be like ceramic. No, I totally understand because I thought the same thing. Mm. I think maybe they have they're different ones. Maybe they could have like this guy's like lower down, so he has like a rubbery one. Because it looked like plasticky rubber. It looked like in the the wide shot when they are, and it may have been that in that when they shot at that time, mm-hmm. and then like having a hard one for this didn't work. Or that they uh, production needed wise, more. yeah, yeah. They production wise, to produce saying, more of them. Yeah, they're like what, we have too many members in our little KKK clan yeah. or the uh, the Vessen Rhine, right. or that's the Inquisition version. Mm-hmm. Um, I, we got a little history. We did. Here. We got lots of history this episode, not just with them, also with fruitcake. Yeah, amazing. I, I can't wait to talk about that. That was yeah. one of my favorite moments in the episode. Me too. But we'll get to that. Um, yeah. So yeah. So they they're tracking down their local their local mini Vessen Rhine. Mm-hmm. Um, who basically they're just like they're really they're just a hate group. Yeah. They exist to hate. And you're right. It looked like in the original like it was. I thought it was made of like metal. Right. Like it was like going to be a copper mask. It looked or something. very sturdy. So either way, okay. there could be more than one. This guy has the same mask though. Mm-hmm. Um, the creepy wolf like I'm gonna kill you mask. Maybe he's from a different chapter. And like this chapter usually uses hard ones, and this one uses flimsy ones. How many ones. Portland chapters of this hate group? It could are be there? like North Portland, South Portland, or like you know maybe because Portland, you know, California drove up. I don't know. Portland's Seattle. a dark place. There are a lot of gangs. There's, yeah. there's yeah. too much territory for one. It's of a the Seattle same gang. chapter. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my god. I'm trying to make reason why we have this. I think it's just a lower down guy. Sure. Okay. Um, like he was the guy who had to go get beer. They're like. Hey, we don't like you. Go get beer. <laughs> we ran we're, out of beer. You, we're going to have this meeting, and we don't have time to go out and get more beer. You, you're not important. <laughs> Take your rubbery mask and get out. <laughs> don't come back without an 18 cat pack of beer. Yeah. Or a 30. I want yeah. a 30. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, so they get Bud. They mm-hmm. enlist Bud. And I like. I love it when Bud comes back. Yeah. A little ice beaver. I um, miss him, and I hope this is... Um, you know, kind of a reintroduction to him being around. Maybe he'll join the Scooby gang. I mean, he's always been like sort of in the Scooby gang. Only when he... He's like fringe Scooby gang. He like forces his way in. An adjunct member, if you will. He's a member of the Scooby gang when he's like, wait, I want to be part of this. Okay. And they're like, all right, come on, Bud. I mean, let's face it. Bud makes a lot of mistakes. Yes. You don't really want him in the Scooby gang. I do. He just like occasionally can like lend a hand. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> like in this case, he just happens to know everybody because right. he's very unassuming. So I don't think anybody minds that he like knows who they are. Also, he's very gossipy. <laughs> he's super gossipy. That's what his role would be. Okay, so if he were in the Scooby Gang, sorry to go on a tangent, but he would be the one. He would sit in the um, trailer, and then when they need stuff, he'd be the one they call and he would do the research. He'd be their research assistant because that's where he would excel. Because you be can't like, oh, tell. I know this. You can't tell Bud where the trailer is, though. You would have to make him live there forever and never leave. You'd have to chain him to that's the trailer. That's what I'm saying. He would be the tra the trailer gnome, <laughs> <laughs> who is actually a beaver. Yes. Yeah, it's a nice beaver. Yeah. I don't think Bud is going to be chained to the trailer. <laughs> I want it so and bad. And we can't let him at the trailer because he'll tell everyone. He'd be like, oh, I was in the woods off of I-97. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, why were you up there? Oh, just, just don't, don't worry about it. Grim stuff. <laughs> what? No, he's the one who's going to do the data entry to give us our Grimsipedia online. They could take a book out, like give him one book a week. Yeah. To like. He would be great at data entry. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Anyway, off of this. Um, Sorry, guys. But so, I mean, they investigate, they, they come up with a list of names, mm -hmm. um, and the, so that Nick can follow up and like figure yeah. out, these are, basically, they come up with, these are the people who are behind the burning wolf song yeah. and the brick and mm -hmm. basically any, the, the threats against Nick. Yeah. Um, and we hear them talking about trouble. Yeah. Now there's this female grim running around. <laughs> rubble, rubble, rubble. Indistinct rubble. rabbling, yeah. as, as, the, <laughs> as the, the subtitles say. Yes. Um, and then so they kind of go off on their own thing mm -hmm. for a little while. Josh in trouble. Are we shipping them? No, absolutely uh, not. Okay, I wasn't. I didn't feel anything. No, like they don't feel like they are to, uh, together at all. But like they're running off on their own. They feel like um, brother and sister, but like he's her baby brother because she's got to protect him. You know what I mean? That's, like like that's cousins, cousins, yeah. But he's like her baby cousin, and it's sort they sort of are cousins because grim, grim. Yeah, I would say I definitely do not ship them, and I'm gonna say this, and I mean this in the nicest way possible. She could do so much better, <laughs> so much better. I feel like if they if Josh goes away for about a year mm -hmm. and they bring him back, he could come back being super badass. Yes. But he's not there yet. Not even close. I could see him trying to settle down with a non Vessin Rosalie. You know what I mean? Like a like Interesting. A, a... See, I see him as like Yes. I guess he could I'm thinking I'm I, I don't wanna excite you too much, Yell. He's sort of like Meisner in a way, in that he's not he's neither Grim nor Vessin. Uh huh. He's a completely a Karasite Schlishkinen. Right. So he, he can't see anything, but he's fully immersed in that world. Yes, but, but Meisner is awesome. And I think give Josh <laughs> a year of trouble training. And workouts. He needs well, that's to... part of trouble training. Okay. 7 a.m. It's, like, it's not even 7. It's 5 a.m. Yeah. workout calls. Sun's up. We're doing stuff. Yeah. All right. If he comes back in a year and he's built like Meisner... I might, I might. Okay, move maybe off not Meisner. built like Meisner, like a nerdy little Meisner yeah, who no, can I, like still like do a lot of damage. No, I'd like him to be built like Meisner. <laughs> All right, and then he'd be perfect. We'll wait on that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll wait for that. Um, but so I mean, really, they their story sort of jumps to the end scene. Yeah, that last, uh, such a it was such an intense scene. They they really went tight on those shots. Yeah. Um. So we really could see like the tears welling up stop i don't want her to go i know i was i was shocked that really? she was not that it was she your was, prediction not that she was going mm -hmm. but that she was going now yeah this felt so sudden to me and i guess that's the point i don't know i feel like she says to nick you know you you don't need me anymore but when she was the only grim she, I mean, they at least portrayed it like she felt like the, uh, she was bringing them this trouble into their house because she was a Grim. You know what I mean? Okay. Like she, she was the only one they needed to rely on her. And so she felt, I want to say a little guilty kind of 
that she had to keep doing all this stuff and that they're now able to move past it. But now that he's a grim again, she's like, oh, you don't need me anymore. I can leave. She's not happy either way is what I felt. Does that make sense? Fair enough. I think the the big thing for her is Mm -hmm. that she's always been on the run. Yeah. She's always had a purpose. The purpose for most of her life has just been survival. Right. Very core, just base instinct Mm -hmm. to survive. But that's still a goal. It's still something she's actively doing. Yeah. Then Nick loses. She comes here. Her goal is training to be the a grim. Right. She wants to be a true grim, not just in name, but in yeah. ability, uh, in skill. So now that and then it was protecting Nick when he right. lost his powers. Now that Nick's back, she's a subset. She's like not as good a grim, but she's good enough. Like and she so doesn't her, need training. Her any new longer. mission would be to protect Josh and yeah. to train him. She didn't have anything if she sticks around. She's just part of the family. I know, but she doesn't have a day to day goal. She's not a cop. That should. This is what I want. I want her to start studying criminal justice. I want her to get a degree. I want her to go sign up for the academy. <laughs> and then she doesn't have to be a detective. She just has to be a cop of some sort. But that's like three years of work. That she could do. I. I. So what? <laughs> so what? Jump ahead three years. Let's have a time jump. Just don't get rid of trouble. I feel I feel like putting her in a training scenario, even if it's sped up, mm-hmm. putting her in that one place for so long is risky and dangerous. It's just asking for her to run into more people and then be uh, there's a reliable place that she's going to be. Mm. And it's not she's not in a precinct surrounded by other cops right. where like criminals would not go. Yeah, it's. A bunch of it's a training academy. Yeah, it's risky. I'll tell you this though: her leaving now, um, I think is going not to get into predictions, but it's opening up the the questions of you know the the killing of uh, Weston Stewart, the um, and remember that murder that I harped on to begin with that she was implicated in the one that she committed. Yes. The one that defensive, the, but yeah, the one that Wu found the photo of her in the drive-thru. Remember all that? Her leaving is now, I think, going to open up this whole. Wait a second, you know, she's now a fugitive of sorts. She's now on the run, even though she shouldn't. She shouldn't be. Does that make sense? Um, it it does. But I'll just say, like, she does not live in Portland. She does mm-hmm. not have, other than Nick, she does not have an address or anything holding her to Portland. Right. So it's not so much on the run as it is she just moved on. Yeah, but in, in terms of those two crimes, she fled the, the state. But like a couple months later. Yes, but I don't, I don't think either of those cases are closed. And she's still a suspect. Is she, though? I uh, mean, she's definitely still a suspect in that first one. Where Wu was like, isn't this the suspect? To Wu, but to no one else, because the captain's like, no. To Wu, because he's the only actual cop doing cop work as opposed to grim work. Does that make sense? Sorry, I'm applying law and order logic to no, grim. No, no, and, and that's totally fine. I'm, what I'm saying is like, but the captain does not list her as a suspect. Yeah. So officially, mm-hmm. she would not be considered a suspect. Right, right. So leaving town wouldn't trigger anything over like a legal thing. Like if they ever yeah. had more evidence, mm-hmm. they would have to then they'd put be like, out Nick, a warrant. And where like, did this girl that was staying yeah. with you go? And he's like, I yeah. don't know. Except for that when she leaves, he reminds her that that she's leaving but they're still friends and that she's welcome back yes that was very i could very much feel the the like the hand of a producer in there (laughs) like and don't get me wrong i'm totally on board because it's like yeah you're going out on this mission but we can bring you back at any moment in case we need you right i think in, in addition to that it was a reminder to this girl who has spent her whole life running who has never had a home has never had a family that hey you're moving away you're not leaving the planet you're not on the run anymore you're not disappearing you're always welcome home i just don't understand why she would leave during christmas you know what i mean that's like a thing right that Maybe, people do they stay together i mean she was she wasn't there last christmas no. Maybe, maybe she thinks spending a Christmas would only. She, it's hard. She's. It's so hard to leave. She can't even say goodbye to Juliet. Mm-hmm. So imagine if she had to sit through like the most family 
like the, one of the most family togetherness holidays, mm-hmm. at least in terms of like how people perceive it. Right. That like she that's like a huge Mm-hmm. You should stay. And right. she's like, I got it. Got it. I got to get out yeah. of here. Please don't look at me. I got to run. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> let me take Amory's truck and get the hell out of here. Yeah. That was a nice little touch. I mm-hmm. like that. It's yeah. like this truck just sitting there gathering, literally gathering a lot of dust. Literally not going to make it out of the state. <laughs> <laughs> Go eh. home. You won't make it. <laughs> uh, you never know. Marie might have put some, uh, some little additions into yeah, that. Maybe. All right. Let's so we so we we unfortunately lose trouble. Yeah. But we had uh, some other fun stuff in this we episode. We did. Um uh, but before we jump into all of the fun of the Christmas story Christmas. and the and you're going to get to hear me try to pronounce a word that even Monroe couldn't pronounce no in this episode. No one could pronounce it. No one could say it. Not a single person. Maybe those Greek families could, but nobody Maybe. else. Well, we'll talk about the Greek families. Yeah. Um, but before, first, I want to talk to you guys about iTunes. Mm-hmm. First of all, guys, happy holidays. And thank you for watching all of us here at After Buzz TV. From all of us here at After Buzz TV, may you have a happy holidays and a wonderful new year. Ugh. <laughs> I knew that would set you off. No. Anyway, but I do want to thank you, especially for watching our show. You guys, the Grim fans of this podcast, have been so great. Yeah, you guys are Grim fans in general, mm-hmm. whether they be Grimster or Gremlin, <laughs> are so great, so much fun. This is such a good show, and the fans are equally good. Yeah, and you guys that watch this, me, it means the world to us, mm-hmm. and we want to you to know that. And so I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I'm sure he yelled us too. Yes, maybe. From the I don't know of if she's heart. going humbug or not. No, when it ta- when it about the fans, I really do appreciate them. <laughs> we have amazing fans. We on do. The show. We really do. And I want to give a shout out to a couple of them. Yeah. And you get these shout outs if you uh, read the review on iTunes. We're currently sitting at 54 ratings. Yeah. It's not bad. Not no. bad. But I want I want 100 by the end of the season. What you say? We're about halfway through. Yeah. I want 100 by the end of the season. Let's and I do think it. you guys can make it happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to give a shout out to three of our reviewers Yay. Who, who wrote in. Uh, Smo3319 says, It's fun to see other people geek out for something as much as I do. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, yeah, we geek out pretty hard here. <laughs> uh, great show from Michael B85. Five stars says, Did Trouble lose her memories or just her fears? I think I really think she lost her fears and gave them to Squid Man. So there are a lot of we had a lot of conversations on YouTube about yes. this um, that we kept saying she lost her memories, lost her memories. She didn't lose her memories. She lost the the fearful memories. See, I this is where I disagree, though. I oh. think she did lose some of her memories. She wouldn't know that she lost them necessarily mm. because they're just not there. Right. Um, they were the memories most tied to those fears. Mm-hmm. So like she would still remember the generalities of what happened, but right. the parts that made Made her most fearful those pieces of her memories are Interesting. gone i think she kind of just lost the um the she's she's gained relief is what i think of yeah that, that, yeah. that was, that's the effect regardless right. i don't think it's like a what happened when i was right right she didn't lose her like self that way mm. um yeah it, it's yeah words yeah regardless you guys understand um and buttercup 5982 for the first time listener Oh, yay. Uh, five stars. I listened to this podcast for the first time today. I really enjoyed it. The hosts have good chemistry. I look forward to more podcasts. Thanks. Thank you for listening, Buttercup5982. Yeah, Buttercup. All right, guys. Let's jump back in with the Cali Canceroy. <laughs> okay. Oh, that was so off. I don't know. Don't, don't look at me. It's. I got the phonetics down. I yeah. got to work on the Greek. Mm-hmm. Getting the Greek was with Cali Canceroy. Sure. Anyway, yeah. So the Calaconsoroi are the little demon children, the little demon <laughs> goblin elf children, yeah. who trans. We find out transform once in their lifetimes during puberty, but only if they get this super rare condition yeah. that's compared to sickle cell or Tay Sachs. Yeah, which I I like the comparison. It makes sense. Mm-hmm. It's like both basically like the th- kind of thing where both parents have to be carriers, right. and then. Like you may not even be a carrier if mm-hmm. like even if your parents were one. It's right, right. super super rare just because you have to have a certain combination of genetics that mm-hmm. most people just aren't even aware that they're carrying. Right. Um. And here we got three. Yeah, I like that aspect also. Um. When we found out that these were kids going through puberty, I'm gonna be honest. What I expected <laughs> was 
because this episode was like it was set up it could have been super offensive but it wasn't it was kids i think we were worried last week yeah. that it was gonna be a bunch of little people running around yeah and that, that was gonna be voguing. really offensive i think <laughs> Um, but it was kids. And then what I was really hoping for as soon as they said, oh, they're kids going through puberty, that it was kids like once they've had the growth spurt. So the idea would be that when they become human, they're these tall, lanky, super awkward, gawky guys. That's what I wanted to see. But no, they're on the other, like they're just starting puberty. They're like fifth graders. Yeah. And that was disappointing to me (laughs) because I really wanted like awkward, you know, like the seventh grade boys who like some of them are super tall and real awkward and like, oh, the ones who just like shoot up overnight and this would be like a literal like, and their shirts like are too small because they didn't get clothes that fit yet. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I wanted to see (laughs) was really awkward with the voice cracking. (laughs) That would have been funny if they like had voice cracking stuff going on. That's what I wanted. I I'm fine with the kids, whatever. Yeah, I, I liked it. It worked as like, I like that we're getting a lot, spent a lot in this season, spins away from the just basic yes. Vessin story of mm-hmm. I'm a creature, I have weird habits because I'm this creature and right. this specific uh, type of Vessin mm-hmm. and I Nick has to figure out who what it is and stop them. That could easily get stale Yeah. Um, if it's done too much, but we've gotten stuff like the golem. Yeah. Like, the like these guys who like are not Krampus. the Vessin like Krampus last yeah. year. Uh these guys this week are the the Kalakonsaroi are not a Vessin of themselves. Mm-hmm. They're just a stage of a whole other Vessin. Yeah. Which is some weird bug eyed thing. What the Gentiles. The the Indole Gentile. Yeah. But the we both word, read it as Gentiles. The second which, word is Gentile. Yeah. Great. I mean, yeah, they're they're clearly not Jewish. They have very strong <laughs> feelings about Christmas. Yeah, they're, they're Catholic. They're uh, Greek Catholic. Greek Orthodox. Greek Orthodox, yeah. Um, <laughs> <which> Gentiles. <laughs> they are Gentiles. Yes. Um, the Indole Gentile. Yeah. I mean, I we saw just the quickest little Vogue from the mom. Oh, my God. Her eyes were huge. And like um, like manga eyes. <laughs> oh, my God. They, oh, my God. Yes. They vogued into an anime. She vogued into an anime character. For sure. That's what happened. I didn't even think about that. Well, how did you not see that? I, well, when you say it now, I'm like, oh yeah. my god. They were super manga eyes. They were, but she didn't because she didn't even change that much. She just got kind of a yellower skin tone and big giant and eyes. big giant eyes. This is the Vessin. This is an anime Vessin. Yeah, I really hope we oh get more of them. More anime Vessin, not specifically the Gentiles. I'm just this is just blew my mind just now when you said You're that. welcome. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> um one thing I thought was very interesting though in that scene mm-hmm. with the mom is that she says, You're the grim. Not your not a grim. You're the grim. Yeah. This town is finally like because I've been sort of been expecting this for a while, mm-hmm. like Pretty much, if you're a Vessin in Portland, you know that there's a Grim running around. Right. You may not know who it is. You may not know what he looks like, but you know that there is a Grim mm-hmm. running around Portland who doesn't kill people. Notice she doesn't run or attack. Yeah. She knows that she's she's a little worried because why is the Grim at her front door asking holding, about a kid? Asking about her kid who he has his her kid's like medical mm-hmm. alert bracelet. Yeah. That would scare somebody, but she knows that he's not there to hurt her. Mm -hmm. And I like that that's finally traveling. Yeah. Um, It's not, it it doesn't feel forced. Yeah, it makes Um, this, it it may, I feel like this show has progressed so beautifully and so naturally. Yes, it's not, it's not taking jumps forward Mm -hmm. for unnecessary reasons. It's not falling into old, like boring stories. It, this show is moving forward at just the right pace. Yeah keeping us with very interesting stories like this insanity of puberty (laughs) uh, monster. (laughs) Christmas puberty monsters is what we get. Yes. Because they're not just tied to puberty. It also happens at the winter solstice. has to do with the lengthening and shortening of the days. And it's the 12 days of Christmas that they do it. We get get some history lessons in this. Uh, We got a a few. We got the the fruitcake. Not just the Vessenrein and all that stuff. King, it goes back to King Augustus. Mm-hmm. Um, this is why we have twelve days of Christmas, and with as far as I know, no other explanation for why that number, or maybe there is, and I, I'm just not aware. I think there is, and I'm sure someone who celebrates Christmas 
and celebrates the 12 days will be able to let us know. That's probably a Greek Orthodox thing. I think I'm it's unaware of. I think it's a, a Catholic thing. Shh. Yes, probably. Don't look at me. I'm a Jew. Don't look at either one of us. <laughs> yep. Disp- to ignore the hats on our heads. We do not know any of this religious stuff. Anyway. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, but I love that there's, and they even say, there's actually a reason for fruitcake. And I, I appreciate that because I grew up hearing people tell me, oh, blah, 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 Christmas. Here's the stuff you have. And there's fruitcake. But nobody but eats no, it. Yeah, everybody hates fruitcake. And cake. I'll be honest, I know maybe two people who actually eat fruitcake. I know none. Um, <laughs> like, I know just, it's just like, it's not bad. You can have good fruitcake out there. But it's just like, I don't eat meh, fruitcake. meh. Get, get, get some peppermint bark in there instead. There's so many other great options. You're saying words I don't understand. Anyway, um, but so, you know, they they discover that these kids because they're because they are children, mm-hmm. they will go after anything sweet. Yeah, they like sweets as we all do, especially at the holidays. And the way they trap them is hilarious with Monroe and Rosalie, and they're like, this could be really inappropriate. Because they're oh. they're leaving a trail of candy into their truck. <laughs> Follow the fruitcake, kids. Come uh, into my van. And then I like the the I like the little um, Jack and Jill, or not Jack oh, yeah. and Jill, but the um, the storytelling the mm-hmm. story tale, yeah. uh, thing where they're like, if anybody asks, we're just trying to figure out how to get back to the church. Yeah, <laughs> so good. Like this whole show started from fairy tales. Right. Might as well play into that. Mm-hmm. They they don't play into them that much anymore because we've gone so far away from yeah. Grimm story, like Brothers Grimm stories. But I mean, we did talk about recently the stories. Uh, the the authors were uh, Grimm's. The authors of. Um, was it Alice oh, yeah. Merlin? No. No, it was... Um, oh, it was the Jungle Run, Book. Runner Kip- Kipling. Yeah. Um, and our, we had theories that Mother Goose was probably right. the Grimm, which yeah, I yeah. am still excited about. <laughs> um, yes. But I, And then this is that like King Augustus's mother mm-hmm. came up with a, a treat that was a sweet cake that was covered in fruit sure. that would attract... An, she baked an 84 Pound version of mm-hmm. to attract and wear out yeah. the uh, the Calaconseroy. Sure. Hey, I'm getting good in this one. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a fun little like history thing. Mm-hmm. Like this is why you have this dessert. Yeah. And you don't eat it because you have to leave it out to ward off or lure away these yeah. little goblin children. So they don't beat you up and terrorize your house <laughs> they just like we opened up and there's just a guy like having a nice christmas party and they just bust out like did they here's here's my question yeah who wrapped the was it one of them inside who like let in the others did the yeah. two of them so are they because they seem sort of blind rage for most of it yeah, except, except for, for that that was very much a strategy that was very thought out mm-hmm. um i think Maybe they can think it out in terms of their attack, because also when uh, one was in the um, garage and attacked Juliet and Rosalie because the others let him out and then we see them in the bushes. I think that they strategize a little. They're learning. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. We need Alan Grant to come pop out with a shotgun. Yeah. (laughs) They're learning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One will come from the front and then two from the sides. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Anyway, um, but that's uh, overall, I really liked this story. I thought it was very cute, very fun. I like that they were ruining Christmas. <laughs> okay. Grinch. Yep. Yelled a Grinch. Um, I loved when one of them fell off the roof. <laughs> that was the best. Yeah. I was like, is no one going to catch him? Nope. Okay. Why would you bother to catch him? He stinks. That's true. I love that they smell bad. I was like, yes, boys going through puberty. Um, <laughs> but something else that I thought was very uh, interesting and it's just a little through line in this episode yeah. um, is Woo. Woo's Clues. Woo's Clues. Woo's Clues. Yeah. We need to make a theme song we for do. Woo's Clues. Um, he has a, a folder where he's keeping his clues, his his pictures. Does, can the folder talk to him? I think one day it will. <laughs> he doesn't have a notebook. He no. has a manila he envelope. Has a manila, yeah, a manila folder. <laughs> oh, my God. 
Um, Word clerk. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, but yeah. Wu like mm-hmm. he he's very he's continuing with his passive aggressiveness he's towards Nick. So sassy. Um, of course, strange is your specialty. Yeah. Sassy Wu is sassy. Sassy Wu is great. I love him. Um Yes. He and because he knows that Nick knows more than he's telling at this yeah. point. Like he's very aware. He knows there's something up. He has no idea what it is. I mean he shows them the picture of the thing and he goes, This is the sketch. What do you want me to do yeah, with it? Yeah, how should I proceed? Yeah. Carefully. <laughs> he's like, that's not helpful. No. I that doesn't mean anything. Like <laughs> what should I do from here? Right. Poor Wu. Um and but I, I, you know, there was almost a moment where we were gonna get like the captain. I felt like we were gonna get the captain telling yeah. Nick, to just tell him. Yeah. With like, leave out these pieces. Right. Tell him about everything, but not me. Basically. Yeah, which is I think pretty reasonable. At least at the beginning, like don't tell him the captain is a sort of a warlock, like half warlock thing. Royal. Yeah. yeah. I think all Wu needs to know is Vessen, Vessen are real and Nick grim. is a Grim. That's Done. it. You could even, in theory, test his reaction first. Yeah. If he reacts well, you can tell him about trouble so he can drop that whole thing. Yeah. Well, I think he's going to ask. I think if that's, if, if Nick says to him, Vessen, this is what this is. Grim, that's what I am. Then the Wu's next question, yeah, Wu's question next would be, where does trouble fit into this? And I think he's smart enough to know she killed this guy. Yeah. Oh, she was he be. one of these things? Yeah. Was she one of these things? No, she's a Grim. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, can we just tell him already? I, I better <laughs> be around the corner. Yeah. I'm just, I'm so... Mm-hmm. I want to talk about more about it in predictions because yeah. I have some thoughts. Me too. Um, but I don't. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but then, so after all that, mm-hmm. um, the only other things going on. Well, with Nick and uh, Renard, they have a very quick conversation. Yeah. About I don't want you, you my mother, to kill your mother either. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That was, was it. Like it was basically like. I did like that Renard is smart enough to have pieced together. Adeline is in Vienna. Yeah. They know who has it now. Yeah. Like that both sides, nobody's being an idiot. Mm -hmm. Both sides have pieced together the logical conclusion. Right. This woman was probably Nick's mom. If she was Nick's mom, she probably has the baby. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think I'm excited to see. um, I I just like that they dropped this into this episode. They were like, hey, by the way. Don't forget this. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited to see when we finally get that showdown. Or maybe not a showdown. Some of the fans said on uh, YouTube that um, that Renard's mom and Kelly might know each other. That they might. Ooh. If they actually like. They're like, you. Yeah. Maybe. I'm going to go with they were former lovers. I'm kidding. Calm down. <laughs> you gave me such a crazy look. I'm kidding, fans. Calm down. I was just. Well, former, <laughs> I didn't. So you jumped away from it so quick. I almost didn't process it. Yeah, good. Um, yeah, I'm gonna put the kibosh on that one. Okay, as a uh, highly <laughs> unlikely. Yeah. Probably. However, I do think it would be a great twist if they did turn out to be friends. Yeah. Um, I think that would be a very interesting mm-hmm. uh, twist. Um, or that they just team up because we're sort of predicting yeah. them being enemies. Yeah. But they don't have to be. They right. Can be best buds. Yeah. Can you imagine a super powerful Grim like Kelly on the same side of a super powerful Hexen Beast I like can, Elizabeth? And it sounds great. It just sounds like the best thing ever. Yeah. Um, I imagine Renard and uh, and Nick being like, Mom. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they come back to town. They're like, we're ready to fight. Mom. Like all four of them are on like some like battle. There's like a battle yeah. lines are drawn yes. situation. Four of the four of them are there and they're like, kids, you stay back. And they're like, but we fight this battle all the time. Yeah. You're our kids. Go sit down. But mom. <laughs> For those listening, you're missing great facial expressions. Oh and my hand movements. God. Um, yeah. But yeah. So uh, some other like little things that yeah, got touched things. on this. Uh, Mon Rosalie, mm-hmm. will they ever get their honeymoon? You know, very cute little way to, to tell yeah, her on, on the train. Um, I am really glad that they didn't drop Monroe's super Christmassy thing because last year it was such a big deal. 
it was a huge, you know, storyline that. Oh, he spent a whole B story just right. like on nothing but like, oh my god, he's so obsessed with Christmas. Right. So if this year I was like, if their house is not decked out, I'm gonna be writing those writers. I'm like, guys, what did you forget? But they didn't. Nope. So good. And it was t- it was tied in just mm-hmm. enough. Yeah. And I love that Rosalie has fully embraced it. At this she point says, where I she have to. she knows the whole history of mm-hmm. the to- of the toy train. Yeah. And defends it. Yeah. To the di- she's like, you will not take this. To- yeah. <laughs> what. Um, what did, you, what did you, I put down? Defend the train. <laughs> yeah. Um, so good. But yeah. And then I'm so excited. I was right. Or it looks like I'm right. Yeah. Juliet. Juliet got pregnant during her Adeline sex. I think the best thing is when she asks, when she's like, wait a second. Could, who am I? Is she, what? I love it. That was so yeah, good. and Rosalie's like, but you weren't her. I mean, but you were, but you weren't. Yeah, <laughs> like, well, who knows? I'm excited. And it's this. It, 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 it's so many questions, and I'm 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 pretty sure that look at the end is more. They like, we didn't see we didn't see a the plus stick. sign, yeah. but that's pretty. That shot more or less confirmed it in my mind. Not necessarily. Yeah, it, it doesn't. It doesn't confirm that it was 100 percent that time mm-hmm. or that. But although right. for TV, like how yeah. could it not be? Um, and it doesn't necessarily confirm what was right. if anything if anything is going to happen at all. But I think that they were basically trying to tell us she's pregnant. I think what's really exciting is to see this this story play out because you know up until uh, this, there's no. Their relationship has never been, since he found out he was a Grimm, it's never been normal. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad that they've decided to take this and also be like, we're, it can't just be they have a baby. It's oh. going to have to be this. She was not herself when she got pregnant. And who's actually, you know, the mother of the baby? And what's the baby going to be? And, and oh, what, I'm so excited. And I mean, I, it's just a huge question. What DNA if 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 she mm. got pregnant while she was outside, looked like Adeline, whose DNA would that baby have? Well, that's the thing is, is it just outside? I mean, do does her internal body also, is it Adeline? We is... never saw her Vogue or anything, and she was very emotional. Mm-hmm. So in theory, no. I think her mind was Juliet. Like her mind and, and soul, let's say, were Juliet. But all of the internal everything organs and outside, even an egg. Yeah, I would say the egg in the womb and all of that would be Adeline. So, mm-hmm. in a twist, sick and twisted way, Juliet is a surrogate. Yeah. for a Nick Adeline baby. That's what I think. But who it's knows? It's so beautifully messed up. <laughs> <laughs> yep. um, like it's messed up in a way that you could not have on any other like almost any other show yeah and any fan who is coming into this at this point or at that point yeah. in a series is like what, what the f yeah. is happening yeah but we know that this is amazing yeah and with that let's go into some predictions because <laughs> we haven't already and now yeah i mean we've obviously been predict. TV. we always predict yeah but let's go into official predictions you yeah. know also the spoiler wall towards the stuff for next week's episode right because whoa yeah i'm just gonna say that okay. i mean i won't say anything else okay fine no no <laughs> then i'll speak um the chupacabra <laughs> yeah okay, chupacabra storyline so again great mm-hmm. i love legends from just around the world yeah um cannot wait life. for the loch ness monster Calm down. Sorry, that got me real excited. <laughs> I know. Um, I hadn't even thought about Loch Ness Monster. How could you not think of Loch Ness? I don't know. There's so many. Yeah. There's so many other ones. <laughs> you, you, you turn in, if you tuned in last week, you heard my rant about the Rainbow Serpent. Yeah, seriously. Uh, um, but more than that, the Chupacabra seems interesting. Yeah. And, and it, like the the legend of the Chupacabra, which we'll, I'm sure we'll get into yeah, next week. Yeah, of course. Week, very much about killing animals, not mm-hmm. people. So how does that change? Yeah, kills one human. What? I love the voiceover in yeah, the whole trailer. But even more important, mm-hmm. even more important. Yep. Even more important. Say it. Nick is gonna tell Wu. I think it is either going to be the cliffhanger for the season or the half season, 
or it is a hundred percent misleading us. That's what I think. I I'm, hope not. I am predicting that it's when Wu is like, what, what? And Nick is like, it's real or whatever. Okay. All right. I'd be fine with it if it comes towards the end. Mm -hmm. Like, and it is more or less a cliffhanger. Right. That I'm totally on board with. It's fine. But if it's misleading us. If it's a us, fake out, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> We're all going to be pissed. <laughs> no, I think if they, the writers have to be aware. Because they we talked about in this episode these were they're these are good writers this is not crappy television it's great television they've strung Wu along for too long at this point mm -hmm. it's time it's time yeah. for Wu. like he's gone from the stages of like this is really weird this is a lot of strange stuff happening in portland mm -hmm. too i have seen some stuff man yeah you don't even know wait <laughs> do you know yeah. um i think you know some more that you're not telling me maybe you should let me in on that to you're clearly sassy, not Wu. telling me yeah Come on, dude. Why are you being a jerk? Just tell me. I'm sassy, Wu. Yeah. Yeah. To now, it's time. Like, Wu has got to be either, he's going to, he's got to, it's got to be revealed to him. And then the question is more so, how does he react to that? Yeah. Is he pissed that they've strung along for so long without right. telling him? Is he excited that he's not insane? Um, is he vengeful? Is he vengeful for whatever right. reason? Who knows how this is going to come out? I mean, we haven't had anyone respond negatively to finding out yet not yet and that scares me especially because i don't want Wu to be angry i don't want to lose angry him. Wu. i would be very interested to see what reggie lee could do with an angry Wu. i'd only be okay with it if there's no fear of losing him that's the only oh, way i'd yeah, be okay yeah, yeah. With i it. don't want to lose him from the cast right and I, um, I fear that if he does not take it well it will end up with him being like f it i'm out of here table flip yeah. He is unfortunately mm -hmm. the perfect level of connected into the show where they know that we as the fans are very attached to him. Right. But losing him would not kill any of the main characters' storylines very strong, very heavily. Mm -hmm. So it would be an emotional death. Yeah. Unfortunately. Right. Because I don't want him to die. <laughs> and I think the writers. But he's on a good, he's the right, if you were going to kill somebody, oh, yeah. he's the right choice. From mm -hmm. a writing perspective. Yep. No. I'm oh no. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, guys. We just reasoned out why we might not have him along for. Or, Therefore, he has to take it well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's it. And someone else has to take it poorly All right. later on. All right. It'll be interesting. Introduce a character we don't like, guys. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, any last thoughts on this one, y'all? Um, I'm going to predict that we won't see Meisner till next half of the season. <laughs> well, we only have one more episode. It's right. a very safe prediction. We never said the predictions had to be unsafe. This is very true. Yeah. I predict that Nick will punch somebody next week. <laughs> what a safe <laughs> prediction. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Grim, The Grim Who Stole Christmas. Good. <laughs> Yell Teagle If people want to keep up with you uh, Over the week Over the holidays And all that Where can they find you? You can find me online At yell.tv That's Y-A-E-L.tv There you'll find Nothing about Christmas Yay um, You can also find me On Twitter and Instagram Lots of other good places At Yell Teagle That's Y-A-E-L-T-Y-G-I-E-L -E -E And make sure you're Following me on Twitter If you're a Doctor Who fan Because I am Giving away Doctor Who swag There is a giveaway Ending on December 25th yeah, I picked that day arbitrarily because there's a new episode of Doctor Who. <laughs> All right, guys. And you can find me on Twitter at that Zach Wilson, T H A T Z A C H W I L S O N. And also here at After Buzz on a whole bunch of shows Doctor Who Classics. If you're a big Who fan, you're missing it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, tons of other stuff. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s got one episode left. Then we're going for the holiday break. But, guys, I'm Zach Wilson, and thanks for geeking out with us. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.